Yeah. All right. Is it recording? Oh. <coughs> hey guys, it's Josh from KDM Tuners. Uh, today we're gonna do a video about the PCV system um, on our cars. Uh, we've been getting a lot of messages since we did the whole vented oil cap deal. Uh, so we wanted to go over that and kind of share with you guys how the system works a little bit, the reason why the system is there, um, how to vent the, the system properly, and a few different options that you guys can go with um, in venting. Um, these systems are used on race cars all over the place. Um, you probably start noticing more now that you start seeing the, the vents, they're on everything. Um, so the stuff on the table that you see is just place there, but you'll see these later in the video. We're gonna go over everything in detail, so. Um, but without getting too wordy with it, let's just jump to the car and get started. We'll go over it, so let's go. So here we're at the engine bay. Um, First things first, let's just talk about the PCV system itself um, and how it works. So uh, the idea behind the PCV system is that it's going to be sucking your fumes and blow-by gases out the PCV valve, which is a one-way check valve that pulls down into the intake manifold, which goes back into the combustion chamber and burns out the back. Somehow the EPA thinks that's good for the environment. Some, I, I, I'm, kind of it's silly because it's exhaust going out the back of the car what's the difference I don't really know but somehow they, they came up with this idea um, a lot of the misconceptions that people have is which way the flow goes uh, in this deal so um, basically what happens is so on the stock system you have a line that runs from the back of the valve cover to the to the intake so what this is doing is it's drawing in fresh air from the intake track, filtered air, into the crankcase. And while this is pulling, it's pulling all the way from this system all the way through. To, the idea is to get nice cold air in there to flush out the fumes and stuff that you don't want in there. What happens is under throttle, this is pulling. When you close the throttle, the, the valve stops so nothing can go back in. And what happens is there's still pressure building inside the engine and it, the only one way it can go is out this vent. It's going to go out the least, the easiest way it can out of the system. Um, so if you have this connected to your intake, what that's doing is pushing oil back into your intake, back down into your turbo and oiling up everything. So some people don't see a lot of oil coming out of this side. Some people see a lot. Every engine is going to be a little bit different. So just depending on how the ring configuration is when they built the engine. Um, there's a lot of factors, the health of the engine, general health of the engine, the age, the mileage, all that good stuff. So um, what people are doing now to combat that is adding catch cans. So as you can see over here, we have our catch can set up. Catch cans serve a great purpose to catch all the oil and everything that's coming out of the vents. Um, what, what it also does is causes a restriction to the system. So inside the catch cans, you have a baffling system. And so the air and the pressure have to get through all that baffling system um, to be vented out into the intake manifold, into the out, out the vents. So what this does is even though you're doing a great thing with the catch cans, you're causing more crankcase pressure inside the engine, which causes issues. Basically, you can have a loss of power. Um, you can blow out seals. There's a lot of things that could happen. Um, so what we do to prevent this is one off this side here, which is your intake side. Okay, this is not called the PVC. So this is your intake side, and this runs all the way down, and it's going to run in our situation is to this can here. Now what we do is we have that coming out the intake manifold or the uh, valve cover, sorry, into this can, and then we have the can venting to atmosphere. Still have the baffles inside, so that gives it a little bit relief. So we have a vent there. We don't have anything going back into the intake at all. So any air that's going in is all we're getting air. There's no chance of oil getting into this at all anymore. We've eliminated that by having that set up. Now, the issue is it's still not vented enough. So um, when we are at the racetrack after 30 minute sessions, we're having a half a can of oil coming out of this side. Uh, so we're trying to figure out what we could do to fix that. To fix that, what we figured out was that we need another vent. 
So we, we uh, came over here, we ended up drilling into the valve cover to create a, another secondary vent. So we ran, a, I think this is a 10 AN line and to an oil air separator. So this is something, this is a JEGS one, you can get it at Harbor Freight. Um, and uh, here's one right here from Harbor Freight that I can show you. So these are $6 from Harbor Freight, $50 from JEGS. It's just a basic compressor air oil separator. So that's all you really need there. If you wanted to get fancy, you can add a can, um, but you don't need to. And what we did was add a vent. So that's all this is, is just a vent, a second vent. Um, in doing this, we figured out that we have no oil getting into our catch cans on either side. So we vented it enough to where there's no oil spilling out of the engine anywhere. Um, so we know that it's working. And uh, getting right back to this, the can setup, the can catch can setup, it would be the PVC side. So this is the PVC side that when, when people talk about PCV, this is the valve right here under this foam deal. This can needs, cannot be vented. It has to be, because you're pulling from the intake manifold, it has to be closed looped, they call it. So if this has an air leak in it, your car won't run right. You'll have a vacuum leak, you won't get boost. There's a lot of issues that come from that. So the way we have that routed is we have a one, one line. It's kind of hard to follow because it goes under the intake. It goes into the can. And then we have a line going out of the can that goes right back into the manifold. And that's it, it's sealed. So we're still using the PVC on here to pull fumes out and we have two vents on it to vent it properly. Uh, moving forward on that, what we have done and what you guys have probably been seeing is these vented uh, caps, right? So the idea behind this vented cap is exactly the same idea as we have here where we drill the second vent. Um, the ones we're having manufactured have a 50 micron uh, filter on the bottom side of these. Um, so you can run this by itself with the 50 micron filter and be fine and not have any oil come out. The ones that we've sent out so far are just handmade drill. There's no micron filter. So some we're getting some that are making an oily mess for obvious reasons and some are not at all. And the reason for that is every engine is different. So um, some, you know, the rings are different, just different things. So the reason why we decided to do that off the cap is for one, to make it easy so you guys don't have to drill. For two, on the inside of this is impossible to drill. You have to drum out a lot of material on the inside to make this work. And it's not practical for most people. Um, and if you ever want to sell your car, you got to go find a new valve cover. With the cap, you don't have to do that. So what we're doing, we have three different versions of, of systems coming out for this. Um, one would be this cap, the oil cap with the uh, micron filter, and you can run it just like this. The second version is um, we're going to actually, this is not the 90 we use, but just for an example, we put a 90, mil, uh, 90 degree angle fitting on here and we'll run a line exactly like you see on my car here um, set up so you can run it just like that the other option that we're doing and it's a little bit more intensive uh, but the benefits are, are a lot better is we're running it what what do we call an exhaust side PCV basically um, so what we do is we cap off the line that's going into the intake manifold itself so that's completely sealed off. So no oil is getting back into the intake manifold, only air. So we have no oil going in here, no oil going in here, no blow by gases being burnt off at all. And then uh, what we do is we'll vent this side. So then we're gonna run a hose from, so we have two lines here. We're gonna run a hose off this line, a hose off of this port, I mean, and then we're gonna run those over to a vented can. So basically we'd use a three port can these are two ports so three you have a, a third port coming out and uh, so we'd have a filter on the third port and two lines coming in so two in lines and one vented out so it'd be one basic vent if we can get a bigger can with a bigger filter on it the better uh, so that would be vented there and then what we do is we come over to this side and we're going to run a line you can we can set it up either way we can run it straight back down to the back of the car and what we're going to do is we're going to tap the downpipe so we put a 45 degree angle the, the gringle put a 45 degree angle bung on the downpipe after the uh the two o2 sensors and the theory behind it is um there's a an insert that we put in there that sits in the stream at 45 degree angles 
as the exhaust flows go past that 45 degree angle, it starts to create a suction or a vacuum. So it'll start pulling, pulling vacuum. So it works almost the same as the PCV currently. The difference is, is once this is, gets to a pressure, it's just, it just has its own flow. It won't go any higher. With the exhaust side, the more velocity of exhaust fumes go, so the higher the RPMs go, the more exhaust comes out, the faster it goes across the 45, the more uh, vacuum it starts to pull. So it'll actually work like a pump. So basically what we're doing is we're using a pump to pull out the fumes and send it out the exhaust. If any oil or anything like that happens to get out of the system, it just gets put out into the exhaust and burns off and gone. None of that junk is getting back into the engine. Um, it'll vent the whole thing a lot better because it's going to pull more vacuum on this to get all the fumes out of there. Um, one thing you guys will see on other cars now that we've talked about this is uh, a lot of the drag race cars and stuff like that will use pumps. So it'll be a, a belt-driven vacuum pump, usually mounted on the firewall somewhere. Um, and that is for this reason. So what they have found is in drag cars and high horsepower cars is that the crankcase pressures get high enough to where it actually robs power from the engine. So if it's vented properly, they've noticed that up in upwards of 30 horsepower gain. Um, that's not obviously for every car, but it is definitely well documented and uh, it, it's, it's a thing. So. The other issue is, is when you start building these cars up, we, we change the rings in these motors, we make the gaps bigger, um, and we do that on purpose for blow-by. We want the blow-by to get by, whereas most people would think you don't want blow-by. The reason why you want blow-by is there's two rings, and what happens is when you have two rings stacked on each other, one, the, the blow-by gets past one ring and it gets caught in between the other if the ring gaps aren't big enough. And then you get what they call ring flutter, and uh, there's another term for it, I can't think of it right now. And basically what that does is the pressure gets crapped in between both rings, and it has nowhere to go, so it literally just blows the ring lands on the pistons. Um, in high horsepower cars, this is a problem, so they make the rings, the gaps bigger, which increases blow-by, which increases crankcase pressures even more. And if you don't vent it properly, the two things that happen the most is if you're lucky, your dipstick will come flying out of here and then uh, oil gets everywhere, right? That's if you're lucky. If you're not lucky, dipstick stays in, you blow your rear, rear main seal and now you gotta take your tranny off to change the seal. So that is super common um, and that's why even on cars, for any turbo application, this is more of an issue than for those guys than it is for a naturally aspirated engine. Um, so all this stuff we're talking about right now is super important for all of you guys. It doesn't matter if your car is stock or built. It doesn't matter. This is all something you guys should look into. Whether you buy stuff from us or do it on your own, it doesn't matter. So, um, But in a nutshell, that's kind of the general idea um, on the PCV system and, and how we vent these. Um, and we're hoping that we get some of the confusion out. So real quick rundown. The, the line that goes from the intake to this port, we want to vent that. So we're going to plug the intake off. We don't want we don't want anything going to the intake. This side here, we're going to run to a catch can down over here into a can, and we're going to vent it. That's the setup I want you guys to run, um, or is preferred. So vent that side. So that's, again, not the PVC side. The side that's off the back side of the manifold here, it's just the vent. So we're going to vent that. PCV, we have a line going from here, the, the valve cover, the PCV valve, runs down into a can, and then out the can, and it goes back into the intake manifold. And, then, and that's a closed loop system. So do not vent that system on your cars right now. All the stuff I talked about earlier about putting this into a vent and into a can, that's getting in down the line. But for now, that's how it's set up. If you guys want to run a second vent from that point on your cars right now, that's where you get into this cap here. You can either drill it like we did if you want to. You can buy a vented cap when we come out with them, um, and you'll be fine there. So uh, if you guys are race applications or we're building your motor and you want to get more, like a more elaborate technical setup, then we'll go back into the whole system and how we're talking about the exhaust. So. I just don't want you to get confused on that. If you guys have any questions further, just please message us and let us know. Again, wanted to touch on it. 
Uh, seems to be a lot of confusion. Um, one last bit of information um, that came up. I think it came from another platform in the form of a, I don't know if it was a troll or what the deal was, but they said something about if you vent the intake or invent your crankcase that you're going to cause issues with vacuum in the system for the motor itself which won't allow your blow-off valve to work properly and you won't be able to boost your car. Uh, the two systems are completely separate from each other. I'm not sure how he got it tied into one, um, but since he did bring that up I figured I should say something because there might be other people that seem to think that's how it works, but two separate systems altogether. Um, so just, you know, what we're talking about here is just its own independent thing. When we start talking about vacuum into the boost system and all that stuff, or vacuum in general, it's a, it's a different different system. They're not related. So uh, that's it. That's pretty much it. Uh, so that was our little quick video for this week. And uh, we thank you guys again. And if you can subscribe and like our channel, it helps us a bunch. If you absolutely hate what we're doing, then definitely don't like or subscribe our channel. Uh, until then, we got a bunch of cool videos coming up in the next few weeks. Um, so just stay tuned and uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Appreciate it.